Maybe ten. All right, so we are going to start making babies this week and next week. So you're supposed to learn the rule of eight, which is how we time making babies. So this is going to be a timeline. <laughs> so everything with babies is a weak kind of thought. So let's do time zero. This be a little more. I'll go down. You go. So time zero. We're gonna start the clock when conception, fertilization. Conception, people were like, so spermy plus egg makes what? What do you form at conception? Zygote! I'll let you one word. Yeah, word. All right, so time zero is when you go with zygote. So that's where biologists start our clock. So now you form a diploid cell, then we're going to start our clock. So, what's that zygote going to do after four months? Was it? Right. Mitosis. mitosis. <laughs> so remind me from one twelve what mitosis made. Same Two cells. Same. Same cells, right? Two uh, cells. Yeah. All that. So another word we use to call these your cleavage products. Okay, in this context, what does cleavage mean? In this context, or any context, it's the split. So you're taking the fertilized egg and splitting it over and over and over, and that's mitosis. One cell to two, two to four, four to eight. So what we're gonna do? Look at this picture here. So here's my ovulation. So my egg came out of the ovary, which we just got your test on. Okay. Uh oh, we got some tails. Congratulations. So fertilization, clock start. Boom. Now you see the fertilized egg is doing this, splitting in half. We call that cleavage or mitosis. We're cleaving the egg, 0 to 4 to 8 to 16, 32, on up. Eventually, you're going to form a raspberry, or more of it. And eventually, you're going to form a hollow raspberry called a blastula or blastocyst. So what I've done is I've divided my cell into all these little cells. And that's cleavage. So, now what? I made a ball. So, go down. You're going to implant. Indeed, indeed. So, I'm going to go implantation. So, after I do my cleavage products, after I cleave, I'm not going to implant. We are. So, we're going to do implantation of the plastic. Plant. Plant where? Where are you implanting? Where is this? The uterus. The uterus. What part of the uterus is on your chest just now? The endometrium. So tell me, did you want a thick or thin endometrium? You want a thick. This is the logic. So baby's going to burrow in your endometrial lining after we form cleavage. How long did that take? What time are we on now? Yeah, week, one. week one. So, everything I just told you takes one week, seven days to perform. So, at the end of week one, you have implanted. So, the rule of weeks, week one, you've implanted. Okay? So, it takes you seven days, roughly, to travel down the fallopian tube and fly a mom's uterus and stick yourself in there. So, week one, week one. By the end of week one. So, fertilization to implantation, roughly a week. Okay, let me show you another view of the implantation. So, here you are. Here you are, a hollow tennis ball, blastocyst, they call it. That's mitosis, that's cleavage. And here's the uterine wall. And what are you going to do? You're going to do that. Does anyone remember biology 101 
Autotroph, heterotroph, what's a troph mean? To eat. So literally eating thing. Right? Glass bill on a clean eater. Right? So glasses is basically choose and digest its way into your gland and use your lining. So we're going to plant. So that's the end of week one. Right? So if I show you another view of that, you can this here. So what's this funny yellow ball? What is that thing? It's a blastocyst. That's what you're planting. So you're one week roughly, and this pink background that's modulus, and this is you. Right, so at the end of week one, I should be planting into the uterus. That's what that's what that's what that's that is the step in plantation. Okay, what about you said the You said the blastocyst, you just described it. Yes. In plantation? Yes. <laughs> okay, so showing you making this up much, let me show you an animation of that process, because I know you love that stuff. Okay. So let's do here. Sterilization <coughs> typically takes place in the upper part of the oviduct. Cleavage begins as the zygote moves through the oviduct toward the uterus. Continued mitotic divisions produce a ball of 16 to 32 cells, called a morula. By the fifth day, a blastula has formed, with a surface layer of cells surrounding a fluid-filled blastocele and an inner cell mass. Uh, okay, so you go back just a tad. They call it a blastula. That's the same as a blastocyst. So the rule is in people were blastocysts, and in every other creature known, it's a blastula. I don't care what you put out to the blast part. Blastula, blastocyst, they just same thing. About a week after fertilization, Implantation is underway. The blastocyst adheres to the endometrium that lines the uterus and begins to send out projections into the maternal tissues. As implantation proceeds, the inner cell mass develops into an embryonic disc that is two cell layers thick. This will give rise to the embryo. Membranes start to form around the embryonic disc. The amniotic cavity will fill with fluid and cradle the embryo. The yolk sac will function in blood cell formation. Spaces in the maternal tissue around the implanting blastocyst open and fill with blood. Inside the blastocyst, a chorionic cavity opens around the amnion and yolk sac. The membrane that lines this cavity is the chorion. It will become part of the placenta. Now let's check what you have learned. Drag the text to the boxes to label the structures that have formed by two weeks after fertilization. So now we're at two weeks after fertilization. So week one is when we actually entered the endometrium. Now this is week two. So what have we done between week one and two? What happened here? What did the animation say you did? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let's keep going. <laughs> 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 How much was that teaching you anything? Right. So, so week one we've been planted. Now we're going to move on toward week two. So over here we're going to go by week two. So somewhere between week one and week two, you're going to start forming layers in the blastocyst. All right, layers. So let me show you some static pictures of that. Did you find it? Sorry, I yes. didn't interrupt you. Do you mean by the end of week two? Yes. Okay. Yes. Let me show you what we mean by layers. All right, so let me show you here. So let's get over here. This big pink circle, what is this supposed to be? Yolk sac. That's you, right? It's the plasticist. It's the ball of cells inside of the lung. You notice now, there's these funny looking layers and spaces forming in it that weren't there when you started. So if I go back and show you the picture I just showed you, go over here. Remember at the end of week one, you were just basically the ball. Now if you notice, you're starting to develop layers and cavities in that ball. Right? So by the end of week two, you've taken a ball of cells and begin to separate parts and form layers. So this has a special name in biology. When you form layers, it's a magic word they're going to say on a test. It's called 
called castration. It sounds as romantic as it sounds, right? So when you're making layers of embryo, you're now castrating. It's okay. So I'm making layers, I'm making spaces. The three layers that are the most important for you are these three right in the middle that are blue, red, and yellow. And they have names. You look up here in the upper right, they each are named something germs. There are three germ layers, they call that. <laughs> So in gastrulation, we're going to make three layers. They're called them the germ layers. Tell me what germ means in this context. Making germ. germinate, growing. So I'm going to grow layers. They are the name of those things. So in order, we're going to do ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. This is where you medical terminology people will have fun. This is the easy one. Derm means what? Skin or layer, right? So ecto means outside or on top, meso means middle, and endo means within or inside. So we name them basically at their location, on top of, in the middle, and under. So these are the three layers that are forming in the embryo. These are germ layers. What are they going to do? They're going to make tissues. They're going to form tissues. So go back to the first day of 231. Remember then? Right? Remember the hierarchy? Cells make what? Tissues make what? See, the logic is we're following that pattern to the little person. I'm going to take cells, a cell, make more cells, then make tissues, and the tissues will make organs, organs make systems. So you're building a person the same way you learned in 231. So for me to build you, I have to make tissues first to make organs next. And these are going to make the tissues of the embryo, these three layers. I'm going to, just, I'm going to show you and then view of that here. So the colors represent those, those tissues, and that ectoderm and endoderm. So at the end of week two, you form those. Now if you notice, those are then going to go on and make tissues in my body. So you have to know what tissues come from which germ. Right? So we're going to get a list over here of the germ tissues and what tissue comes from which one. So let's do that. So let's go through each one again. Ectoderm. This is still part of that, yeah. So I have my three germ tissues that I'm making over here, and they're all going to form a tissue in my body. So let's look at ectoderm, which is blue. Can anyone see the blue one and tell me what tissues I'm making? I'm making nervous tissue. So ectoderm makes nervous tissue that was in 31. What else does it make in blue? Epithelial, Epithelial tissue. And this epithelial is going to be stuff that's on the surface of the body, has ecto on top of. What kind of epithelial is on the surface of the body from 231 week 2? Yeah. 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 epithelial yeah. tissue, pseudostratified, PCC. All those tissues you expect to be on the surface of something will come out of this one. Right? Let's look at mesoderm. Which in this case, is the red. What tissues do we make from mesoderm? Muscles and connective tissue. Muscle tissue and connective tissue. Right. Muscle oh, connective tissue from the red. Go look at the red on the other side. Yes, it's a little bit of epithelial. Yes. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Where do we find the In the muscles. Name a muscle that has epithelial in it. Big heart. Heart. Right. 
the heart has an endocardium, right? That's the carnium, the fascia. So you're going to have some type of filial in these parts, right? The major one, though, is M and M, muscles and mesoderm. Look at endoderm, which is yellow. What does the yellow one mean? Epithelium. Again, where do you think this epithelium would be found if it's endoderm? Yes. This would be the epithelial lining, my internal organ, such as your GI tract, your respiratory tract. This is the lining of your intestine, the lining of your stomach, the innermost layer. So by the end of week two, I've made these derms, and I start cranking out tissues from them that match their position. All right. So I'll show you another way of looking at that. Again. Let me you where we are. So here I am at the end of week two ish. <laughs> I have my ectomasm and endoderm forming kind of in the middle of this ball. And those are then going to create the tissues that I'm going to form. So I'm going to show you another view of that. It's hard to see if I know. All right, so the top. Okay, so I go, right? From my day. Week one, blastula, blastocyst, the word you prefer. Implantation. I'm now week two, I week two, I'm now looking at my gastrulation or gastrula. And when I gastrulate, I'm going to make my ecto, endo, and mesoderm. I'm going to make these layers that are going to form my body. These layers are going to crank out different tissues. So if you look at these things here, what tissues do you find in the brain? Nervous tissue. What, what tissues do you find on the outside of my body? In the epidermis, which is a stratified squamous epithelium. So I'm going to crank out the tissues, and then I'm going to create the organs. In my endoderm, the lining of my GI tract, the squamous of my GI tract, the squamous of my airway, some of my glands, because they're glands of epithelium, that's inside of me. The mesoderm is going to be my muscle tissues, it's going to do some of my, that's my spinal cord, some of my bones and heart vessels, all that stuff in between my outside and my inside. Make sense? So once I get to week two, I've now made some tissues and begin to crank out different type of organs. Make sense? All right. Which leads us now to week number what? Now I'm in week three. So week two, I did my germs. I'm now to week three. I'll put that over here. So now I'm in my week three. I've done week two to get there. I'm in my week three. The fancy word that you're going to learn is organogenesis. <laughs> Someone tell me from medical terminology what organogenesis means. No, organ. I'm making organs. So from week three onwards, you're making the organs of the body. Because I can take tissues and make organs out of my tissues. So end of week two, I have tissues. And then beginning in week three onward, I'm going to start making the organs that are out of these tissues. So let's make a list of what organs go to what tissue over there, or what term, I should say. So here's a picture that walks us through what we're doing. So week two, active as I do. Now, beginning week three, I'm cranking out the organs these tissues would make. Over here, we have to take a list of the organs for each of these. Ready? So, let's do the organs for each one. So, ectoderm. What organs would I make from my ectoderm? So, I can do my CNS. In my skin, I summarized all that. 
So I'm going to make nervous tissue epithelium in week two, and week three, I'm going to start building a frame spiral cord skin out of those two tissues. Okay. Makes sense? Mesoderms, we need what? Yeah, so we have heart, we have the cardiovascular system. Cardiovascular system. We're going to have my bones, my cartilages, right? My kidneys on there, my blood, because blood comes out of your bones, all that stuff you think of as circulatory connected. So I'm going to make my CT and MT in week two. In week three, I'm going to have a heart and blood and all that beginning. And then my endoderm. What's my endoderm going to make in week three? I have my lungs, my GI tract, right? my endocrine, the glandular, right? et cetera, et cetera. So beginning in week three, I'm going to take those tissues and start producing the organs you expect from them. Some combination. And this is organogenesis. Make sense? Okay, so let me show you a picture of this. We're going to go to Indiana for a minute. In case you're really curious about embryology, you can start with anywhere. Um, Indiana University now has this high school website of animation, so how you build people. Okay? So we're going to do some general embryology. <coughs> that is this is kind of cool because what they're trying to show is how you take these three layers and end up making all these parts. And what your, your assignment over Memorial Day is to go buy a pancake, get a pancake, buy a pancake, buy a pancake, <laughs> and fold it into a person. Let's see what that looks like. 
then sort of later on. So we're going to go a little further along. Say about, well, let's do about here. So this is showing a picture. It said I'm four and a half weeks long. So I implanted, I made my tissues. Four and a half weeks, what else did I make? Four and a half weeks. Yes, the organs began with three. So I have we can have organs here. Right? So mom's out here. Here you are. What organs do you see? Do you see any organs? I see a bunch of them. Right? I see your organs I see limb buds, I see your cute little tail, there's your belly button. Those are gonna be your that's your throat base your bill slits. But I can see now parts. I see organs that are forming. Right, so that's all happening after week three. I begin to fold you and make these organs. Right? So hence, we have some language here. Let me show you how doctors think about this. So time zero, fertilization, start the clock. Week one, implantation. The old was conceptus, and that's called pre-embryonic stage. And then second week, conceptus. Week three, what are you called at week three? Formally, embryo. embryo. Why do we call you an embryo magically in week three? I'm building organs. So at week number three, when I am making organs, the formal definition that I learned long ago is you are now going to begin forming organs. Right? If you don't have organs yet, you're not yet an embryo. You're something else. So now you're an embryo because I have organs that I'm forming. Okay. So, let's go through it. Week four, embryo, what are you doing? Making more Week five, are you embryo? Week four. Week six, say yes. Seven, eight, nine, no. Okay, so what happened between week eight and nine that you get to being called embryo of the fetus? Organs are four. So, week nine. You are now a fetus. So, week three through week eight are all the same thing. You're building organs. Week nine, you're now called something else. You're no longer an embryo. You're a fetus. Why? What does that tell you? You're ready to pop out. Not yet, week nine. <laughs> <laughs> Not for long. You can pop out, you won't literally. You got a heartbeat actually week three. Yeah. Oh, let's go through the logic. If making organs makes you embryo, and I'm no longer an embryo, that tells you I have done what? Very good. I've completed organogenesis. Uh, internal organs. Now, this is the formal. This is only dealing with the internal stuff. You don't have genitals yet. They're much later. But in terms of all the plumbing and the wiring, I pretty much built it. I built my brain. I built my heart. I built the liver. I built the kidney. You don't know if it's a boy or a girl. You don't know if it's a boy externally. You do internally. But I still need to So if that's true, why can't you be born a week nine? That's right. So even though I have a heart, I can't stay alive outside of mom with this heart. Even though I have lungs, they don't work yet. Right? So just because you have the parts doesn't mean you're functional. It's like building a house, right? Just because there's a wall up doesn't mean you really live there very long. So the concept is I've built all my parts into the name change, but my parts have not matured yet. So week nine, you have all your parts, they just aren't big enough to run. And you have to keep going as a fetus. Right? That's what a name change. Make sense? So if you really think about this mathematically, one, two, three, four, five, six weeks to build all your organs. That's pretty darn fast. Yes. Which stage was it that um, when we had the chart with the X and the Ys and then uh -huh. the um, the Wolfie and yeah. the malaria, when was that? Wolfie malaria differentiation or well, genetic differentiation to be zero, right? Uh, Wolfie and gut break down at least week four. Okay. So we can see the week four or five, what do you do? 
Make sense? In the general pathway? Okay, so here's the question for you. Go back to your menstrual cycle that you just took a test on, right? Remember that? So, fertilization would occur at ovulation, right? So time zero. Okay, how long did progesterone stay around in your body? Two, two weeks. About two weeks. But now we're at week three and week nine, right? So why haven't you menstruated all of this stuff out yet? Why is progesterone high? <laughs> well, I know it's six weeks, but how would you progesterone, how would progesterone know that there's a big one there? Take a picture of this graph, you know. Behold, four miles of pregnancy. We're going to learn a new one today, which is the one in brown. <laughs> I don't actually see Florida. Hi! I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't <laughs> More or less for right now. We're going to do a little side note here. We're going to talk about HCG, which is the brown line on that graph. Formally, if you don't have to know, it's called human chorionic gonadotropin. Hey, that was on your test, gonadotropin. All right? So, human chorionic gonadotropin. This is a hormone right, made by what? What's a human chorionic? Okay. Let's look at the graph. When does this hormone begin to be made? Population fertilization. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find something that has the word chorion in it. From somewhere in here, is there anything? Oh, look! Here's a picture. And I see the word chorion right there. That is, what is this? It's a embryo, right? Aha! So you can correct it that a trumpet is made by the embryo. So this is made by the embryo, that, that human coronary nitro with HCG. Why would an embryo want to be a hormone? In this context, to stop my body from menstruating. And what happens to embryos to menstruate? They fly, right? So the embryo is saying, congratulations, I live here now, don't menstruate. The purpose of this hormone is to override your menstrual cycle and put it in a holding pattern. So what's the pur purpose of this hormone? Is to maintain the corpus luteum. Remind me from the exam you just took what corpus luteum produces. Progesterone. So by maintaining the corpus luteum, I'm going to increase or maintain progesterone. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Remind me also from the exam, the job of progesterone. Maintain the endometrium. <laughs> and to increase the blood flow. Why would an embryo want a thick, bloody uterus? Because I'm eating you alive to stay alive. This will eventually take, the percent will take over. Yes. Sorry, can you repeat okay. that? So it maintains the corpus luteum yep. by an increase in because of Yeah, the corpus luteum then makes the progesterone. Okay, the corpus luteum makes. And that's going to cause the increase in the progesterone. So it doesn't really do anything. The corpus luteum just basically stays alive. All the HCG right. does is keeps the corpus luteum alive. Basically, yes. So you don't ever become an alpha can, so you stay a luteum. Therefore, you menstruate. So if you go to pee on a stick because you're pregnant, what hormone are they testing for? HCG. HCG. So the rhyme you remember is HCG is EPT. 
No, it's still making it. It just looks huge as a pregnant corpus It might actually be special to it, but it's not special. <laughs> so the logic of an EPT test is this, whole, this hormone appears in your urine, and the only time this should be there is when you have an embryo. If you don't make this, embryos make this. Hence, congratulations, someone's maintaining your endometrium, the logic of the hormone. Right? So if you look at this graph, right? HCG begins to climb after a couple weeks after fertilization. Right? So this is the oddest graph of the time, time zero is some place I don't know who that would be. Biologists always start zero at population fertility. So, they so start the first day of the Yeah, which is what doctors do, which is why they're two weeks off from biologists. Yeah. Biologists go go through population and doctors do that last menstrual thing, which makes them wrong. Because a lot of women don't know. That's still wrong. <laughs> so biology land over you know, 36 week, you know, 36, 38. That's the argument is if you do doctor counting or biology counting, that's you get a two week difference between them. But that's you know. So here we go. Embryo begins to crack an ECG. ECG begins to climb. Higher and higher and higher. Notice that your progesterone levels stay up because I want to keep your uterus thick and bloody in this pregnancy. And if you notice, ECG goes skyrocketing in red. Go about two months into this thing. Right? So for the first couple of months, you can pee on a stick. And I'll say congratulations, you're pregnant, because that hormone's flooding your body to maintain the corpus luteum. Make sense? So that's the pregnancy hormone. Wait, that's between the why does it drop? Good question. So why is it dropping? It must be something else to maintain the progesterone, otherwise you can start week 12. And that's the that, yes, that's going to be your placenta, which we're going to talk about next week formally. So let me show you a placenta, which is right here. Yes. If you have a miscarriage early yes. on, are you going to then still have the hormone in your system for quite some time? It would go down after a while. It would go down. Okay. That's how they can check for miscarriages. They monitor ACG and it drops below where the number is. But that means basically the miscarriage is complete. It's still up, then that means the cell number is still in the right tissue. Right. So, no, let's look at this picture one more time. So, here I am, now you can hear your small tutors. And notice how these little extensions sticking out. Why would I want to grow fingers into my arm? You guys look here, look, what's in there? What's in my tutors? Blood. How much blood? Nutrients, right? So eventually, I'm going to grow enough fingers into mom, and we're going to call it something. So if you look at this picture here, I'm going to stick these fingers, these girls, further and further into mom's uterus. At some point, we're going to give it a name. It's going to look like that. And we're going to call that thing there. That's a placenta. So at some point, you're going to start making a growth into mom's uterus. And the placenta actually maintains hormones. So our last little bit of stuff for today is another hormone to main pregnancy. So HCG is one of them. But then over here, another hormone for pregnancy. Number two, called placental progesterone. Okay, so this is made by the placenta, which we'll talk about more next week. And what's about progesterone again? Maintain the thickness. Right. So now that I have a placenta to keep your uterus thick and bloody. I don't need HCG anymore, because I don't care about the purpose of it anymore. I have a placenta. Look at me. Right? So you look at this graph, after a while, HCG goes down, because the placenta is keeping the progesterone and the estrogen going up. So once you have a placenta, you don't need HCG. Both of them, in turn, will change your pregnancy. So when you first get pregnant, HCG is running the show. And once you get a placenta, that's where you show the ECG to drop off. Just like that. Because you're maintaining the pregnancy by the placenta, not the ECG anymore. 